Okay. You can see, like the bottle wants to be more. The bottle wants to be seen more in your world, in that universe. Okay. It most it wants to be seen because you're bringing it to life. See, that's the whole beauty of abstraction or the subjective or the sublime, because mm -hmm. you're you're negating this uh, information from you based upon experience with the bottle. You see, yeah, it's the same that's... thing when I'm teaching cartooning with the young kids. They don't know how to explore their inner verse anymore, how to take something from outside of you and say, hey, this is what I think this is, or this is what I think this, or this is what this is telling me what it is. So when you go into that realm, a lot of people get all spooked out and everything, but that bottle was screaming to me, more, more, give me yeah. more. More, more, more. Or give me a series. Yeah, or give me a series. And then Nadine, don't worry, I heard that in the background. Miss Woodblock, huh? Yeah. I did. I really I love that. And actually, uh, I went to Japan. Uh, the first time I went to Japan, I actually came back with two woodblock prints from like a, a, a local artist. Um, and so every time I come into my house, that's what I see. And just, uh, it's just really uh, interesting. And, uh, yeah, that's cool and all. Mm -hmm. that you can't escape the, the blue collar work ethic no more. When you do wood blocks, you know already that's one of the most labor intensive crafts that you can do. Love it. You Love it. A wood, and there's limited mistakes. Limited. Yeah. Linoleum mm -hmm. cuts are a little bit easy, but that wood cut, boy, if you really can get it, it's labor intensive, man. You better put yourself into a zen-like mode to be able to sit there and really hack away and bring it, bring all your fruitions to life. Whoa, yeah. man. Yeah. That's the controlling. And now you can't tell me you don't really understand an edge now, then. I don't want to hear that from you no more. You said you do a woodcut and you don't understand edges? What? You don't understand a line? What? Never again you'll get that <laughs> off again, Nadine. Sorry, everyone. I had to bring that one out because, yes, Sue Ann, you can laugh at that one, too. Yep, come on, laugh with me. Because she said <laughs> she don't understand edges. Now she's going to let out, she know, woodcuts. She did woodcuts. You got to know an edge in woodcut. You, man. Love you, Nadine. <laughs> love you, too. But, you know, here's the thing. Um, understand that when we uh, take classes in high school and, so, like, nice like some of the like community college, uh, which I took courses and I learned wood block print and that was back in 82. So mm -hmm. those, those classes, it wasn't like everything was finally starting to come together. You know, it's almost like when you're a kid, you learn, they teach you all this stuff, right? Uh -huh. And then then in your 30s, it starts to all make sense, like that it all comes together. Whereas yeah, before, I understand. It in pieces. So, I Don, understand. I understand what you're saying about edges and lines. And, and as we go through these sessions with folks, it's like it's coming together. And that's why I think um, uh, inviting older uh, folks to get back into doing art, that they'll realize. It's not that they don't know anything. It's just about pulling from the past, pulling from their experiences now, and taking little be awakened again to to what's inside of us and what we can do. So that's where I am on that. And then it's then it's Everyone. like wow. Good morning, Miss Paulette. Well, you know, it's sort of like organic chemistry. You don't get it. You don't get it. You do more. You do more. Do more. And then at the end, when you've when they've taught you everything, it clicks. Yes, the click. It clicked that happened. Yeah. Hello. Hey, mm. this is what I have to say to both of you. What's that? Um, what you say is is true in some instances, but you have to understand also when you're dealing with this idea of latency and time, you gotta understand that it's all present. So it's not really about a past or a forward movement. It's about that that moment that you're in right there. I feel you. I That's feel you. I know what you're saying. 
Number number two, I, everybody knows what I'm saying because it's about that moment right there. So then right. when you choose to create, you're not really pulling from a past or a future. You're pulling from the moment. Right. Yeah. You need to understand your connection with this creativity. Now, this is where my aspect comes in. None of it is disconjointed or disconnected from you. In order for you to exist in this universe, you must be creative. That's mm -hmm. one of the number one things for you to, be able to exist in this universe. And it has nothing to do with what we call as humans, time. Mm -hmm. Because here's another one for everybody. Time is nothing more than motion. Ooh. That's what time is, motion. Because what we as human beings is calling time is us charting how things move around you and within you. So it's really no such thing as time. It's just motion and you're observing motion, which means you're looking at the edges of things in front of you. I know there's just a same time. I that that. Translating and you're looking at how things are formed in front of you, the spaces mm -hmm. between you and it and it and you. Mm -hmm. Then you're looking at the light, wherever you may be. Mm -hmm. Atmospheric, indoor, hypothetical, subjective or objective. These are all components sometimes that when you get to talking about them, people don't really want to hear it because they think it's your theory. It's not. When you look around you, in order for you to exist, you must create. This is where the line keep creating comes from. Because you must create. You can't escape it. Soon as you brought an item and placed it in your house, you was an artist. Right. That's just what it is. Soon as you do it, you're an artist. You can't escape it. You can say whatever, oh, I'm not this, I'm not, and I'm too old, and I'm this. All these things that we make up, you can't escape that. From birth to like to, from dusk to dawn, that's your task. Create. Thank you, Dawn. I know. It's more than a Thank you. It's just that that's just what it is. I appreciate you, but that's why I don't really be searching for the pat on the back because I know that this is all human base. Right. It's all human base. And as soon as you connect with it, you'll see how all these other things just fall to the wayside and then mm -hmm. your creations start to become more lively. Just seeing the piece that I got up there. When I was doing this piece out there at the Reading Terminal, I had people that were, how would you say, you know how to see we're from we're in the philadelphia delaware valley everyone if you're from another area watching us so we're at a place called a reading terminal it's pretty much set up like a farmer's market almost you know mm -hmm. what i mean an open marketplace so you know how sometimes you have these long aisles and stuff and people can are walking around and they can see you from a distance well everybody that was coming up to the table was saying my god it got better and better as i got closer so people were pointing to show me where they were walking from. As soon as they cut the corner about three aisles down in the Reading Terminal, if you understand what I'm talking about now, they said as they was walking, they could they could not take their eyes off of what I was doing. And the reason is, is because I'm using what human beings have to see to be intrigued. What is that? The five things that we talked about, ladies, line, shape, form, light, and surface. They say there are 18 modalities in design or more. I deduced it down to five. That's all. That's all. Because everything that you do in your world is based upon those five things. If you go and look and put it underneath uh, close scrutiny, you look at edges of things all day. If you can't really look at edges and be able to identify them, you're in trouble. Your shape association, if you as a human being can't associate form, following function and things like this, your whole world is turned upside down. Mm -hmm. If you can't really identify the light in a situation, oh my God, as a human being, you're in big, big trouble. And then to be able to identify surfaces, just think about it, alarming surfaces that you you don't want babies to touch when they're in their environment because they don't know no better just yet. 
Or say, for instance, if you had somebody that had a stroke or something and it hit them a certain way and they, they don't remember things. Or if you have somebody that has dementia and they don't remember how surfaces are. Can you imagine how damaging that can be when you don't understand edges, line, shape, form, light, and surface? Think about when a baby is learning this world when we first come in. How are they learning these five things? If you investigate that with them, you'll have more fun and you'll learn more. Honestly. Honestly. So just take all of that into mind, too. Ooh, that was one of those deep, you know, Channel 13 moments. <laughs> Discovery Channel. Ooh. Yeah. So good morning, Miss Paulette. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's do it again. Do it in the morning. Can you hear me, everybody? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Uh -oh. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. No, what did you say, Dawn? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I can't hear you guys again. Hold on. While Don is doing that, I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone that's tuning in to our pop-up art session. We're here to create. Uh, talk, enjoy this moment of creativity. Uh, we are finishing up the Ram's Head. Most importantly is discovering the process of finishing a piece of work, um, fine tuning it. And it's always, it's always interesting because for me, I think about when is it the time to stop working on it. How do you know that it, it, the time has arrived and not to go too far over? Um, so that's a question for Don too. Uh, he's working on um, making sure that he can hear us well. Um, but uh, definitely that's something that I think about when I'm drawing um, and or doing any kind of art because sometimes I will go too far and then it's like, oh, it's completely changed now. <laughs> Maybe I should have taken a picture before. Um, so it is really interesting, the process. And so we're here uh, to inspire you to keep creating. And if you have any questions or you want to look at it, the previous uh, sessions, all you have to do is go to the featured section at the top and scroll over and look for uh, those videos. That's one way. The other way, if you go to the media section, go to videos, and then you will see them there. Uh, Facebook doesn't do a great job putting it in list form to make it easier for to find it. Hey, Nadine, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Nadine? Yes. Okay, I can't hear you guys. Okay. So uh, I just want to tell you that. Also, you know, what's we, Don, I think, has worked on a few new t shirts. Um, I'm about to. Put All right, in. I'm, I'm going to get started. I can't hear you guys, but, I, but you, you guys can hear me. So okay. let's just get started. Okay. I'm um, sorry so if I cut into the conversation that you was just having. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just no letting you problem. guys know I can't hear you, but y'all can hear me. So let's just get started on this ram so we can finish her or him up today. Okay. And I do apologize for my technical difficulties, everyone. All right. Ooh, man, this is going to be a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try to come in on another line so that y'all can hear me like we did before. Let me try that, okay? All right. So, yeah, while he's doing that, what I wanted to say is 
All you have to do is go to the about section, and scroll down, and you should see a link to uh, buy a t-shirt if you want to get a t-shirt. This one is Keep Creating uh, 365, but there's a couple other ones that I'm looking forward to ordering. And I think it's, uh, I wrote it down. As soon as your eyes open, it's on. You know, so that you get up and it's like time to create. And it's this whole notion, you know, that um, and he it, uh, earlier and today, in order to exist, you you have to create. You're you're creating as you're moving along. You're creating as you're arranging the food on your plate. You're creating as you um as you um, arrange your furniture or you know make a cup of coffee, put the cream in, and you. You stir it and you see a picture or something in there, and you're like, "What would happen if I put some?" some you know? And you get all excited about that. I think that is uh, that is just like a fun, a fun thing to 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 remind you that 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 this is what life is about. It's about like uh, looking for these opportunities to have fun in the creative process, but that we are creating. You know, even as we walk down the street and we pass by someone and we smile, we create a moment, a precious moment with that other person, you know, and I think that's so beautiful. So I think about that and I just, um, I just get fired up when I listen to what Don's, what Don says and what he's doing about getting out there and, and, and reaching kids and older adults and and, and, and people that might have some physical limitations and then just saying to them, you can still create, you can still create art. You can, you know, the, just because your hand doesn't hold things the way you like everyone else, but if you can get that pencil or that brush in a way and hold it, uh, then fine. If you gotta use your feet, use your feet, you know, whatever. Oh, you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Well, the whole thing whole is, thing is, is you can write your, your name, you can do it. Right. And now, and Don, if you can put a fork, a fork in, your in your mouth, then you can, you do, can, it. can do it. Hey, Don, Don. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's an echo. It's an echo. Right. Okay, so Don's going to work on that. But yeah, that's that's the whole point. You can do it. If if what if what if you can put it in your mouth, you can do it. I, I mean, I wonder what kind of art I could create if I put the pencil in my mouth. Just try it. I've done it. And see, just and do that's it. what he says. Just do it. Yeah, um, what you got to wait for. The first time I saw that video of the young lady in Philadelphia that was playing the piano and she was drawing and changing her baby's diapers and everything else, that ignited me. I was like, man, I ain't got nothing to complain about. This nothing. lady is doing this with her mouth. Then mm -hmm. I found another calendar of people that were doing things with if they didn't have appendages. So it was a bunch of people that was drawing and painting with their feet and not doing childlike paintings. We're talking about official, I can see what that is type paintings. Like they did it with their hands. Mm -hmm. As soon as you see that, I, all the complaints in my mouth and my mind went just went right out the window. Yeah. Because how could you complain about motion or movement and you're looking at a person that don't have what you have, but is, is perfecting a motion based upon repetition with just their mouth. With just their mouth, there's no excuses. Right, so I just sit back on all that, I keep quiet. I say, all right, you know, <laughs> let me get to working, I'm behind the lines. And here's another one, Grandma Moses didn't get started until she was what, like 60 something years old? Yeah. Finished off with 10,000 pieces done by the time she passed. Wow. You let me know everybody. Do you need to complain? Mm -hmm. Can you can you start creating whenever you want to? Yes. We got we got a plethora of artists all over the world that shows you. Some of them did other occupations and careers and things like this and took care of everybody. Then all of a sudden they had an epiphany and they said, I'm just gonna do my creations, whatever it is. And you got a horde of people that you can go and look at. Just put it in Google. Self-taught people. And then you'll find some of the similarities in the stories. Do you know?
you, you definitely see similarities in the stories, whereas somebody did a whole bunch of things for other reasons throughout their whole life, and then all of a sudden, something happened that made them have to see their creative side, whatever it is. And then from that moment onward, they said they would create. I pump into these people all day, every day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All day, every day. I got a gentleman by the name of Fred. He does wood, wood uh, carp by hand. You know, he does, it doesn't okay. bother him. People say they bother him because why? He finally found something that he loves doing. Mm-hmm. That's it. Once you find it, nothing can deter you, just like when you was a child. So that's why they say, keep your child like mine, everybody. <laughs> so, Nadine, I hope you got it. The Don Stevens one is where the voice is coming from. The two is where the video is coming from. Got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I'm, we're going to keep it going like that. And once again, everybody, I do apologize for my technical difficulties this morning. But boy, what a ball that I have at the Reddit term. Wow. <laughs> So let me get this mic a little bit closer. I got the house mic on. And I'm going to put it in that direction of where I'm at. All right. Hear me, everyone? We good? Mm-hmm. All right. So how many of us has already got this mark, this part of our, how would you say, uh, mountain goat? How many people named their mountain goat? Did anybody name their mountain goat? My mountain goat named Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy the mountain goat. Let's have fun naming. We're going to do like Bob Ross in the, you know, we're just going to start naming things and having fun. Cool. So I would say just name your goat if you want to, everybody. Or name her. Excuse me, ladies. I'm the only him here. So since I'm the only him here, I got to also say her. So y'all, what is her name, everybody? Bobby. (laughs) Oh, there you go. Hey, all right. What's up, Bobby? Bobby the goat. Mountain goat. Well, you see everything. Everything that we talked about earlier, everybody, like how we were talking, you got to understand all of us in everything you're going to create when you're talking about manipulating an edge or a line or a mark. The mark is what we're leaving behind, all these little agitations all over the surface, everybody. But these agitations, what's happening is, is this. You're mimicking the surfaces that you see in the lines and the edges and all the light effects and things like this. So why is that important to know in the contact with and touch with? Because it's everything. Everything. As soon as you can do this, you can make any item you want. You see it through all our, throughout our whole world. Doesn't matter where you're at. You just take the idea of shelter and see that somebody drew something out on the floor or something in sand and something that made a replica out of that. So, you know, you just got to understand how important this stuff is in your everything. And so when we come up in here, just let's just go back in some of the areas and now we're just darkening in there. You see, establishing where definitely things are. In the horn in here, we're definitely establishing what's going on in here. And there's a couple of darks and things in here, but at, at this point, everybody, you're not trying to overwork it. You see, you don't have to overwork this part of what you're doing now. Because you're at the crescendo point, the point that's right at the end. Now you're just looking to tweak certain things. Like, you see how I don't have any other description of the surface here about what the horn is doing here when it's going back? Well, me, I don't have the photo up this morning because I have to do it this way. So uh, it's cool to see myself on the laptop. Maybe I'll split the screen. But when you're looking at the photograph, you're trying to mimic, especially with the eraser in your hand, how the surface is moving. See, and if you look, you'll see agitations like so. And there's small little agitations or striation marks that's in there that you want to mimic. 
or you want to express. And this is where my uh, my, my my photo people and uh, uh, Nadine likes to be. You know, we this is where that whole closet perfectionist slips in. This is where you know you can't really think you're going to be perfect. You got to think to yourself, how close can I get to mimicking what's in front? Of if I can express the movement of the surface, then I got it. You see, and then the way I saw it was little small agitations like striation marks, which are a race for playing with the light. Some of you may see it the same way. Some of you may see it as just seeing the darknesses in there. However you see it, we want to get to the end result, which is what is the surface of that horn doing? Think about it this way, everybody. This is just like if I wrote the word goat. As soon as you see G-O-A-T, you're going to say, oh, goat. So it's the same thing. This sigil or these lines or marks are going through the TV screen or through your laptop screen. My voice is being connected with it. But then you're looking at the screen and saying, yeah, I see a ram. But think about this, everybody. And if you're looking at your own RAM, you got to see it that you're putting things there that's going to make you believe that it's there. Just like when you're writing somebody's name. You know, if I write G O T and I say GOAT, y'all going to be like, oh, Don, Don, whoa, whoa, whoa. That says GOT. That doesn't say GOAT. Mm -hmm. And then if I persist in saying it says GOAT, you go, your guys are going to say, what? Okay. Something's wrong with Don. He's tripping right now. <laughs> he thinks G O T is G O A T. Ooh, somebody get to the studio quick. He might be having a stroke or a heart attack or an aneurysm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, all these edges that you guys are putting in that's looking beautiful in your drawings and your renditions, where you're at, remember, it's triggering you as a human to react to it based upon the idea of a sigil or a letter, you see, or a mark. That mark is the edge. You're looking, you say, wow, that's a ghost edge. You want everybody that encounters it, that's a human being, to say the same thing or to have the same experience. You see, and it doesn't have to be exact to what it is. All I have to do is express the same motion and movement. And once you do it, look at what starts to happen. You know, all the beautiful stuff starts to happen. Now you start really, you know, having even more fun with it. You see? So I don't want everybody to think you have to stress and uh, be what we call photo real at that point. That's an option if you want to be that. But, you know what I mean? Know that it's an option that's within your interplay. Have fun. Let it go. This is where some people get upset with me when I say, have a creative fart. Just have creative fraudulence all over the board. <laughs> you know, and a lot of people, you'll be shocked. A lot of people get, you know, turned off by that concept. But then when they get past it, they see what it is I'm trying to say. If you don't worry about your bodily functions and movements like that, then what if your artwork or your creative mode was like that? Where you really didn't have to think about it. It's on automatic all the time. As soon as you say to yourself, oh, I got to create, then you go do it. Think about it. When you say to yourself, oh, I got to go to the bathroom, you don't wait. Not unless you're in the middle of nowhere and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do, right? But if you really technically think about it, when your body and your mind says, bathroom, el baño, you don't go wait. You go, oh, excuse me, body, let's just wait. No, you, you go, oh, you start looking and get nervous. <laughs> like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the look. <gasps> and you're searching. You know how many times I seen that last night at the Red Terminal, people running to the bathroom? No, of course, yeah. That, that's how you really realize how people are getting older, too. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> so much beer going around, but I saw so many people running to the bathroom. It was ridiculous. So yeah, have fun looking at edges and lines and forms, everybody. Because you'll have even more fun, even more beauty in there. Yeah. 
So how's everybody feeling? How's your go going? Now, swear I know that um I don't know if you started drawing this out yet or not. Have you? I think she's on mute. You on yeah, mute? Un unmute yourself. Yes, I started drawing it out. All right, cool. How your encountering started it off? And we're almost at the end. How's it feel? Fun. Fun. That's yeah, it is fun. Yeah. Because all the hairs and you know what the horn is really cool too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I love this kind of drawing. Yeah. You know, like how many people saw the change in the horn? Did you see how it leveled off when it no. got to where the level of the eye is? Like the striations in the horn. It shows you the growth process. And then did you notice when you get down to the tip down here, the horn really doesn't have ridges like it has up here in the earlier process of the horn as it's coming out? Mm -hmm. Shoot, then this is what make, makes you question time too, because how long did it take for this horn to get there? And then how many times did you know this horn break off before it started digging into the eyes? Because that's what happens to the ones that's in the zoos or domesticated. Sometimes the horn will grow and keep growing and penetrate the skull. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was an interesting thing to find out from studying and looking into the goat, you know what I mean? The, the, the whole history of what a goat is. And I'm an advocate of that too, everybody. If you're gonna draw something, why not investigate it to see what it's really all about, learn about it. And then the more you know about that, that particular thing that you're uh, replicating, the, how would you say, more of a connection that you can have. You know what I like, Don, is your, how you show the light. Ah, okay. You want me to talk more about the light, Swan? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Well, when we're looking at light, everybody, you got a whole bunch of different aspects that you can look at light like. Like you can look at light as just atmospheric, you see. You can look at light as being subjective, spiritual, you know, and things like this. What we're looking at light as being now is at really atmospheric. Because this is a photograph of an open air area where this um, mountain goat was. So with that being said, when light is being decimated in an environment area, it always has a direction. So when you look at the surface of things, the brighter or lighter areas that you're seeing is showing you where the light is coming from. So anytime you want to figure out, all right, where is the light source coming from in my particular photograph or whatever, follow the direction on how the surface is lit in front of you. See, when you look at our goat, he's mostly, well, I'm saying he for this reason because he's here with me. Um, this individual goat is lit from the top. Because as we come around the snout, we can see that we run into a dark area. So we know anytime you see a dark area, that says that light can't get to that area. A direct light source can't get to that area. As soon as you look at that direction, you see where the shadow drops, you already know where the light source is coming from. And it might be right about here, but it's not in a controlled environment. It's outside. So, you know, possibly the time of the day. You know, we can't say if it was 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock, things like that. But you possibly could go into that idea just by plotting out how the surface moves. And the light shows you that based upon how the fur is moving or how the surf may be, surface may be moving, especially in the horn. Because you have this darker area here and the light hits there, yeah. But then now you want to show that rough skin or that rough cartilage where that area is coming out and you want it to press a little bit harder. Now, when we're talking about charcoal drawing or graphic uh, uh, impressions or graphic drawings or graphic paintings, you're just dealing with the element of tonality or achromatics, achromatics, non-color, meaning uh, from the brightest bright, from the brightest brights to the dullest or darkest darks. 
So you're not really looking at the color of the horn. That's why I suggested to everyone, if you have the photo with uh, from that Nadine put up, thanks a lot again, Nadine. Uh, if you look at the, take the copy of that photo and then make another copy in your, in your particular laptop or tablet or phone, and then turn that copy into a black and white version. Take all the color out. Uh -huh. So then this way you can start training your eye not, if you're going to be working with charcoal, graphite, uh, 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 ink, things like this, things that are truly graphic, black, and then just the color of the paper or just uh, uh, white itself. You see, you, you're always going to want to look at how the surface moves and then that'll tell you where the light source is. Another quick just look at where the dark areas are. Follow the shadows. If you follow the shadows, you can see up in an area like this. This is where the fur really kicks in around the brow of the animal, covering that part of the horn. So then you would just mimic that area, you see, and start to build it up to get to that idea. Even in these dark areas, you're going to see a little bit of light coming through. Those lighter areas are representing that growth process in the horn. And you want to show that type of growth and movement. Here on the other side, it looks almost like a plate if you look at the photograph. And you can definitely see a ledge in there, like how it's growing out of the skull. So you want to mimic that, that light and dark that you're seeing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. The more you look, the more you see. Here's another one. Everything has at least 50% gray around it if you're mimicking it to be outside or indoors somewhere. Because we don't live in a void. So I know our background, we're leaving white. So just, just think about it this way. We're the first Photoshop. We're the first copy machine because you can pull things out of context. Ooh, let's have fun again, you guys. Uh, if you really look at it, this is what, okay, the photographer took the first generation of it. Then the publishers did the second generation of it. Then we're looking at whatever the dimension are. We're looking probably at fourth or fifth rendition to get to our first rendition. Look at that, everybody. Wow. So then just understand it's a lot of observation that you want to do to look at the surface to be able to tell how things are moving, how the light really messes with things graphically and achromatically, lights and darks, highs and lows. There's another one that I'll bring back. Remember, everybody, when you have your device in your hand, which is your charcoal, right, you're mainly worried about what? how dark something can be because you can't make zero with your pencil or with the charcoal, but you can make zero with what? Your eraser. So then now when you're dealing with your eraser, you can say in that tonal scale that you talk about from zero to 10, some people say zero to 100% darkness. Some people reverse it and they say zero means the absence of all light and then 10 would be 100% light which would be zero, the way that I'm suggesting to you, meaning that the absence of light is the zero. And then 10 would mean 100% darkness. So then you're looking around and in your environment, even if you're not drawing right now, just take some time to look around your environment and see if you can identify the highest heights and the lowest lows of light in your environment. Now, if you're indoors, you're basing it upon the luminosity of the light bulbs you chose to pick. You see? So if you have blue light and stuff like this, just know that that cool blue light helps, helps things to be more crisp when you're indoors. Warm light makes things more heavy. You see? So that's another why this animal looks more yeah. crisp is because he's in a cold environment. And most of the times, when they do take pictures of goats like this, they're in a cold environment. 
Another thing with light is when you surround things with a white or light color, it'll make some of your dark seem darker. You see? So that's why sometimes I have a tendency just to leave the backgrounds white sometimes. But then if you wanted to put, how would you say, some movement in the background, this is where you're looking to match what the background is doing in the photograph or source that you're using. So meaning that if he was in a bunch of trees, I wouldn't necessarily draw the trees if I didn't want to, right? What I would do is look at the, the how would you say, the value of the greens that would be there. And if the values of the greens are like 50% intensity, then I'm gonna put a 50% gray tone back there. And then that'll make your object move like how it's moving in the photograph. It's the same thing with cinematography too. Where you immerse a certain item, the light is going to react to that surface differently. And then it's going to react to your eyes differently. So have fun, everybody, looking at your screen, dealing with the contrast. And everything. <laughs> yeah. but that's what that helps with. So you can make your TV screen a little bit brighter so you can see stuff real good. Really see the, the pimples on your newscaster's face. <laughs> you know? Um, Sue Ann, did I, did I touch on things the way that you possibly uh, needed? Or is there some other things that you would like to talk about about light? That's an interesting question. So thanks for asking. Uh, I'm mute. Can you hear me? You're muted. Can't hear you. Muted, for, some reason, for some reason, I didn't realize that you were doing charcoal. I don't know why. I just did a picture of graphite. No, this is graphite. This is graphite, oh, is? not charcoal. Yeah, this is graphite this time. I got these really cool graphite sticks at Arts and Craft Men. Way to go. Were they, um, are they the 4B? Like, which one? Is it just soft and hard, or does it, like, have a signature on it, like 4B, 6B, 10B, pressed mm -hmm. right on to the, to the block itself? It's a, this is a 2B. Right. See, yeah. Way to go. Have fun with that. Break them off into small pieces, too, so they fit into your hands so you can do all those little intricate movements yeah. that you want to do. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Cool. How do you like that for smudging, uh, Suan, using the, uh, the graphite stick? For what? But, but like, how do you feel? How does it feel to use it on the surface and to smudge with it and rub and manipulate? I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Ooh, ooh. I like hey. it a lot. Oh, it really smudges good. If you. Yes. Yeah. That's why I use the ebony pencil because it's in comparison to when you have a block in your head. But hey, have you ever used the water soluble graphite, uh, Swan? I have not. Oh man, you got to get a piece of that. If you get a piece of that, you can have fun with that because you like being subjective too. So you can have drawing areas and then all of a sudden you come back with a brush or a rag or even just wet your hand and run your fingers through it in a move like how uh, watercolor pencils do. Uh huh. That does sound like fun. Yeah, so then one day, maybe, maybe we'll do a demonstration where we try to get everybody to get water-soluble graphite pencils. Okay. And we'll play around with that idea. What do you think about that, Miss Paulette? Uh, I saw, I, I can't visualize that, but yeah, you know. That well, well, since you've been doing the store hunting, like how we talk about, have you ever seen water-soluble uh, graphite pencils or drawing pencils? <laughs> No, it's I mean a lot about the material, you know, medium to many kinds of class. Say again, did I, I I'm learning a lot about the medium through the class that I didn't know even exist. So oh, okay. I go and buy it and stuff. So I have like a an exist, not much for anything, but I have quite a bit of um stuff I did. A few weeks back, um, some uh, white taco pencil. I right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, Conte crayons. Yeah. yeah. So fun. 
people out. I mean, good job. All shoppers are not equal when it comes to shopping. Uh -huh. I will agree with you. I will agree with you, Ms. Paulette, because it's based upon area. That's how they, uh, how would you say, supply the stores in your area. Yeah. You know, it, it's not really based upon what we may want personally. It's pretty much based upon the frequency of purchase in your area. Right. And also, like I said, I bought the white taco pencil and a pack of um, clean paper. So I have a various height for the 36. You know okay. There you go. Oh, so, yeah. You know, it's and me to the stuff whenever you mention, you know, we need this for this, you know, so that's cool because I've never been new. Okay, well, we, we got to get you to get a piece now. Everybody listening, you can also, the reason why I, I, I called out Miss Paulette because she runs around like how I do and like how some people try to do to find supplies somewhere anywhere in your area. So, yeah, so then... Now, this water soluble pencils you can find at the dollar stores now, your Walmarts and your Kmart type of places, Target and stuff like this. You mean watercolor pencils? Oh, no, well, water soluble graphite pencils. Oh. Or water soluble graphite, or water soluble uh, drawing pencils, as they call them in the store. They're the same type of idea as watercolor pencils, but they're just graphite. Okay. See, now some people ask, can you use regular graphite that way? Yeah, we learned that from the Impressionists. That's what they used to do. They used to run water across their, their pieces with the graphite and stuff like this, and then they noticed that it ran. You know, so, yeah. And then, Miss Paulette, I'm always all about, uh, how would you say, materials. You see? And then, oh, I want to go backwards in time with you. I heard something that somebody said earlier about when do you get things. You got to understand, too, it's based upon experience. Like, uh, my experiences with getting and understanding this stuff that we're talking about happened way earlier on. Why? Because I showed the disposition for it. Then I was just in environments where individuals were to be able to talk about this stuff like how I'm talking. So then that's your environment impressing you to understand your environment more. Every little, like, all right, let me put it to you this way. Every time from K through A, the teacher had an art contest in the room, I had to win. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like if you're if you're intrigued at that point like that, you're gonna wind up in front of an individuals that have like minds like you earlier on that may throw tidbits that shorten the gap on that time frame that we're talking about. It. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Ooh, ooh, did I use, lose my camera there with the with the go? No. Nope. Oh, did you? Yeah. I did? Yeah, I did. Uh oh, sorry about that, everybody. Boom, boom. Uh, I was looking around. I was, I was yeah, I was wondering why I wasn't seeing nothing. I was like, hey, what's going on? I think my little device ran out of the juice. It'll be back shortly. So I'll just keep expressing it. Because now I'll just be able I'll only be able to use the laptop right now. And that camera is not good. <laughs> you all won't be able to see. So what I'll do is I'll describe some more stuff with the horn. Like um, ooh, Nadine, can you share your screen and, and share the um the photo? And then I'll just explain it from the photo so everybody can see it that way or no. I can. All right, thank you. And once again, everybody, I'm sorry for my technical difficulties. Once again, I had a little bit too much fun at the Reading Terminal last night, which led to Don not paying attention to the power pack and all his little devices in his space. So yes, Nadine, you can laugh at me. I saw that smile coming. <laughs> life, that's life happening. Yeah. Like, Don, are you saying that you had one or two more beers or Guinness Stouts or um, 
blue moons than you're supposed to. Uh, yeah, I had one extra blue moon that probably was the, the taker. <laughs> oh, there it is, everybody. See that beautiful mountain goat? Yeah. yeah. So now you can see all the light effects that we were talking about, Sweat. If you look, right. you can see that the light is illuminating. The atmosphere is illuminating the goat from the upper right side, which yes. would be its left side to us. Uh, picture plane is right. So now if you look and you start looking down, like look at the ear, you see at the tip of the ear on the left side, yes. there's a little bit of light hitting there. Uh -huh. And then if you look at the, the top of the horn, the light is hitting there. So then we can say that that shadow area is caused by the horn blocking the passage of the light. So uh -huh. look at how the fur is lit over right above or right, right below where the horn is. You see, this is the way we're looking for the light once you got the shapes and the forms in place which leads you right to looking at surface and atmosphere. You see, the minute that you start surveying, now, now this is where you start hearing artists and artist instructors using the word survey, because you're looking across the surface now to survey what the surface is telling you about the light. That's the way I like to suggest to people. The surface is telling you what the light is doing. Because notice how cool the light is out there. Notice how it's not really warm, that light. That light is really like, you know, really cool. So that, that particular animal, particular goat, is in a mountainous environment. The reason why I can say that with assurity is because, you know, I got that one offline. So I don't want you to think I was out like Nadine somewhere and I took a shot of a mountain goat. <laughs> <laughs> this did not happen. Got this one is, for you. Right. <laughs> you know, so I know we've been using pictures from Nadine. I just want to bring that up because Nadine's been out and about. She shows the pictures, beautiful landscape pictures and everything. So now I show this beautiful mountain goat. I don't want you guys to get confused and think Don went to the Himalayas somewhere and took a picture of a mountain goat that close. No, no, no. This is Google at work, everybody. Okay? So you can put in a mountain goat and you might get this version of the mountain goat that I found online. Nonetheless, if we really look at the idea of light, like how Suan was asking about, you can really see where the light is hitting the surface. This is what you're looking for, those high points. Now you can see the middle points too. Like look at where you would possibly say 100% darkness would be. I would challenge everybody to say to yourself, where is 100% darkness on this goat? The only place that I think that it goes to 100% darkness with a surety is in the nostrils. Right, yeah. Because we have to show how we're going in the nostrils and maybe some parts of the inner organs of the ear orbit coming out in that area in the middle of the ear that you're seeing where the fur is. Those would be the two spots that I would say I would have 100% darkness. Some people may see it differently. And this is where the, the idea of light becomes, you know, how would you say, fractal. Because, Suan, you may be seeing that darkness one way. I may be seeing it because I'm looking for certain things another way. Nonetheless, we can see that it's a darkness, but what would be the challenge would be the degree of darkness that we see. You see, the value would be in question. Not that it's darkness, because we both can agree that those nostrils are dark. But what value or degree of darkness are we seeing it that we're going to use in our piece? If we made it a solid darkness, would we be wrong? No. Will we be right? No. We'll be answering the, the situation for ourselves in your particular drawing. Now, if you can zoom into that area on your photograph, like we can digitally in our digital world, just zoom right into it on your screen, and you'll see, oh my God, it's, it's not 100% darkness. 
It may have, you know, a couple of other degrees of darkness or values of darknesses before it absolutely gets to a, a situation where it's one percent darkness. Oh yeah, now you see it. Yep, mm -hmm. see how the eye is? See how some people will make the front of the eye so dark? But if you really look at that, 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 that area, there's a couple of different values before you get to 100% darkness there, you see? How about inside the iris or the pupil of the goat? If you look in that area, you definitely can see, yeah, we're going inside the skull at that point, but is it total 100% darkness? Nope. You see, there's certain values of darkness that's there. Wow, look at how the fur is really moving around the eye now, so you can really see it. See that, Sue? So that's, that's the type of surveying I'm talking about when you look. It's like, who's going to see more or less at that point? The idea is not that we're saying that that area is blank now. If they, that area was 20%, then I would be like, uh-oh, somebody might be colorblind or something. I don't know. You see what I mean? Other things may be at work. Other disparities may be at work. Especially, and I bring that up because you... Nadine and Ms. Paul, that y'all guys have glasses on. So you gotta understand too, sometimes that disparity is being, how would you say, a double play because it's being refracted through your glasses. Then when it hits your eye, it's being refracted again, you see? So there may be some losses or some gains in seeing these values, you see? So that's why I say what I say at that point about the understanding of light because the only difference would be in the uh, value of the light that we're seeing. It wouldn't be that we're not seeing a dark area. It would be how much of a dark area we're seeing. Pretty much like if you throw kids in the darkness, the kid that's used to seeing ambient light in the dark room is not scared. The other kids are scared because they're not really adjusted to the darkness yet. They, they're thinking it's pitch black. And you only got one kid in the room giggling. That would be me. That's the one kid giggling because they understand what's going on. I can see, you know. <laughs> and then that's what brings me back around to the other idea of environment because it's based upon your experience. If you have certain experiences earlier on, you're going to connect to these ideas faster. You know, then that's where that idea of genius and things and savants come in. But all it is is just a heightened observation that you have and a connection to it and the willingness to apply it where others it may take a little bit longer. That's all. You know? So, yeah. So when you're looking at light, it's an everyday experience. It's a now experience, too. You're just trying to say, what is that light telling me at this particular moment? And then the closer and the more and more you look, this is where or you do another thing, what they call a uh, creative visualization which is like, you can just look at an area or a place or thing and in your mind act as if that you're drawing it. So this is what we're doing with the goat here that we have on the screen. We're looking at the goat and we're saying to ourselves, oh, you know, what can I borrow from the goat to make my impression of the goat? Then once you get things there like you've been having, what you want to say to yourself then is like, okay, what don't what doesn't my goat have that the goat that I'm looking at has that I can borrow that I don't have on the surface already? And that's when you're looking at intricate areas like how we did. You got it all in there, like most of us do. The basic forms and the shapes are there. Now, the last part, you're just really looking at light and surface. So that's why your question was very important. To me. Because at those points of the drawing or the painting or your creation, even when you're sculpting, you get to a point where you're just dealing with surface of life. You see? So, yeah. Oh, and then I got to put, put a mean plug at Nadine again. Even when you're wood blocking, you're dealing with light. <laughs> you know? In the structuring of light and where it may be coming from in your wood block. <laughs> Love you, Nadine. <laughs> yeah, love you, man. There it is. Yeah, everybody. So you get the thorough understanding of that, everyone, right? Light is everything. You want to keep looking. You want to keep observing your environment. The more and more you keep looking at your environment, 
or the more and more you're looking at the source stuff that we draw here on our pop-up sessions every week, Sundays, a loose 10 to a loose 12 p.m. every Sunday, and you too will be able to, I would say, enhance your observation skills. You know, use some of this stuff with, now not while you're driving. I don't want you to be concentrating this on this while you're driving. Yeah, you get, yeah, have an accident, getting stuck looking at clouds like how, how I do. So that's why I relegated myself back down to riding a bike so I can have these experiences that I want to have in safety. You know what I mean? But what you want to do every now and then, maybe in your front yard, maybe in your living room, maybe in your bathroom, maybe in your bedroom, just really look at things and really use the, the ideas that we're suggesting uh, here on Sundays to really open up your world and be able to snatch from around you and get to understand even more why we suggest here that it's all around you. Everything you need to create is around you. You just have to take the time to observe it, to have the experience. And once you have that experience, oh boy, it's, it's nothing nobody can do to take it away from you. You know, it's yours. You know, you can move it. Like I'm looking at Nadine on the screen now and she has a beautiful light that's coming in through the window that's hitting her radiator. Yeah. Nice light, nice light, you know? Some of us, we don't be paying attention to how what Northern Light does in your environment until you absolutely buy a house or get a nice condo or apartment. And then all of a sudden, you just look up and get the right, you know, angle. You don't know how you did it, but you picked it. And all of a sudden, that Northern Light comes through your window. You go, oh, my God. I got to buy the right curtains for this and everything else. This is the study of light. Then. Yeah, sometimes it's too strong, though. Say again. Sometimes it's too strong. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's true. Then that's when you got to get your filtration system going, or put the, the uh, frost on your windows, like how your bathroom windows are. You put the frost yeah. on the window if you want to. That's a new thing they're doing now. They'll put the tape up and halfway put a frost up on the window so they can diffuse the light, but you still want the light though. It's just it's just too strong, like how you're saying. Yeah. I am sorry, everybody. My little device wants to act like a little, you know, uh, wacky today. And it, it's all because I didn't uh, pre, uh, how would you say, charge my, my tabloid that I use. My uh, video on my laptop is not that good. It's very dark, so I don't want to, you know, turn that on. And everybody be like, well, Don, I can't see. I, I'd rather talk it out to you. So you can hear this charismatic voice. <laughs> charismatic voice. Yeah. Like y'all wouldn't believe it though. This these nano mics, I got a blue mic that's linked to my laptop that we're using now, so you can hear me every time. Right. And uh I'm at least a good six feet from it, but it sounds like I'm standing right in front of it. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, so you know that that works, it works real good with sound and so. If you ever get a chance, everybody, and you want to try to get a nice little professional mic, go on over to, uh, what's that place called again? Not Comp USA. What's, what's it called? Uh, Best Buy. Best Buy? You can yep. get it at Staples, too. Yeah, I would say go to Staples, Office Max, and Best Buy, because they all have a package now for, since everybody is business-like on the internet now and want to have professional sounds and stuff, they have all these different types of mics or uh, certain levels of mics that still consider professional at limited prices. If you got at least a, a good hundred bucks, you can get a nice mic now. You may be able to catch it on sale somewhere too, yes, for like 50 bucks. Yeah. And it'll connect to your USB for your laptop. And yeah. Yes. Can I show you some my goats? So you can give me some feedback. <laughs> sure, no problem. Come it's on, really show fun. us the goat. It's really funny. I just did it fast. I didn't because it wasn't here. Wait a minute. Let me see. I understand. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. You got it. The general idea of that goat is there. He's there. Now you just would adjust a uh, uh, swan. All you yeah. can do is just adjust now. Now you would look at the edges of the, the photograph to compare to what you have. So then this way, now you would make, you would condense certain areas and expand certain areas. That's all. 
But the overall idea, as soon as you showed it, I saw GOAT. Yep, I did too. You know, and Sharan, I sent you the photo. Did you see it? No. I sent it to you via messenger. Okay, I, I, I didn't. I when I get a message or something, I usually just let it go because I didn't. I didn't know. I'll look at it. I'll, I'll find it. Yeah. Another way you can get it too, Swan, is uh, Nadine put it up on our on our uh, page, mm -hmm. on our on our page on our pop up page, and on our page. Uh, uh, let's paint and draw along. Mm -hmm. So if you if you go there, you should be able to find it in the photo uh, category of the page. Yeah. Okay. And then you, you can copy it from there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to lose the zoom right now. I'll look at it later. Yeah. Okay. But no, just know that you got it, though. You got it. Okay. All Thank I would you. say is, is look Thanks, at the baby. alignment of where you're saying the horn is, like the tip of the horn. If you look across in the photograph, it's on the same horizontal alignment as the nostrils are. You see? If okay. You look, if you look vertically from the horn straight up, it's almost in alignment with the back edge of the eye. Okay. You see? So these type of edge alignments I'm talking about, you just would look at every edge and then you would go to the source material, the photograph, and look specifically at the tear duct of the eye. And okay. You would, look, you would look at your drawing and look down and look up. There we and go. Look I to got the left and look to the right, you see? And then yeah, you'll see, like, see how the, horn, the tip of the horn is. If we drew a line a straight across from the horn, you would see that the nostril, the top of the nostrils is in alignment with the tip of that horn. Okay, yeah. I see. Yep. I and see. then if we did a vertical alignment, right, and look straight up and straight down, you would see that the horn is in alignment with the back of the eye. Okay. You see? And then if you look up again, it's right with that hump on the back of the hump for the arch of the, the brow right before you get to the horn where that fur is. It's all in alignment. So you're looking yeah. for this alignment. That's that natural grid that we all have that they knew from way back in the Renaissance that you used. Well, before the Renaissance, we can talk about brutalation. That's how he did it to get the 3D effect and get us to understand how to get the third dimension idea. So. We can give it all to Bruno Leche, not really to Da Vinci, because it was 100 years before him, you see? So it's all looking at how edges align in visual space or optical okay. space. What happened with me is I, I've discovered my smudge stick and what kind of crazy. No, have fun, man. Smudge that stuff around. Have fun. Now you just got to use your plastic eraser to cut through to show us the light and the direction of the fur even more on you. Okay. And that's why you have little smaller pieces of that white plastic eraser, because that's like a higher grade or density eraser. So you really can cut through. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yep. What you want to do is wipe that off on the sandpaper on the edges so you can get a clean contact with the surface. So you don't want to have a lot of, like your, yours has a lot of the graphite still on it. You want to yeah. wipe off an area, but don't wipe it with your hand, Suan. Wipe it with another piece of cloth paper towel, or rub it against a, a, a surface that's kind of like a, a gritty, like sandpaper. I got, a, I got a sandpaper block. Yeah, there you go. Rub it on there lightly so you can expose some more of the plastic. You can have a clean area of the plastic of the eraser exposed. So as soon as you touch down on the paper, you'll be able to pull away and you'll see it pull away even more. Okay. Thank yeah, that, all it is is just eraser management. That's all it is. Plastic eraser management. How do we manage that eraser? We don't want the natural oils from our hands to get in there. Even if you wash your hands and your hands are dry, you're still going to have oil in your pores, and you don't want right. to rub that eraser, that plastic eraser, especially with your hand with the pores like that because it gets inside the pores of the eraser, and that's when you get those ugly, greasy marks when you try yeah. to erase. Here's my own. Yeah, you see? So just, yeah, there you go, yep. You can just rub it right on there lightly and expose a clean area. Another thing yes. I suggest, Sue is just cut up, buy one or two and then cut them up into small pieces with a single edge razor blade or a box. The, eraser, the erasers or the box? Yeah, just you know, the eraser. Okay. Like buy, buy a bunch of the cheap pink pearl ones and cut them 
Oh, okay. The little strips, smaller strips. Okay. Or you, like can, you can buy the uh, Stettler dowels for, uh -huh. for the electric erasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can buy those those uh, fillings. Oh, man. I, got, I went crazy with Pink Pearl once. I have like probably about 50 of them. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. I, I went to a dollar store that was closing down and bought a whole case of them. Yeah, was, wow. Yeah, for like five bucks. Bought the whole box, you know what I mean? Like 40, 50 erasers. That was a beautiful summer, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. But yeah, oh, the water-soluble uh, graphite sticks that I was talking about, uh, the main one is is, is a couple. Well, Generals is another company that does it, but this one is like a like a a, a, a a Chinese company, I believe. But they sell these products over here, and they have three grades in the in the water soluble graphite. It's a four B, six B, and a ten B. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to spell. I'm going to spell out the name of the company. Okay. It's D A I. N-A-Y-W. That looks... um. Danoy. Danoy. D-A-I-N-A-Y-W. Yes. D-A-Y-W? Yep. D-A-I... No, D-A-I-N-A-Y-W. Oh, that... I don't... That W on the end is catching me off guard. Deny you something. Deny yeah. something what is like that? what okay. is that? That's the name of the company that makes these particular sticks. And these sticks you can you can order off of uh, eBay. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty cool. They're 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 okay. a decent price too as well. And they're and they're what again? Water soluble graphite sticks. Oh gosh. Water soluble graphite oh. sticks. Graphite sticks. I think I spelled soluble wrong. Oh, S O L U B L E. Water S O L U B L E. Water soluble. W A T E R S O L U B L E. Okay, soluble. Mm hmm. Spell sticks. Spell sign? Yeah. S O L U B L E. Okay, I put an A in there. Oh, okay. Uh, search doubt Danayu for water soluble graphite sticks, Art Fam. I'm putting this out as a. Um, is a chat post. Mm -hmm. So everyone, so I have the spelling, it's all there. Yep. Okay. Now another company that you may find in your specific areas where you're at, you know, as far as we're talking about region, Generals is, a, is the, the stable. Mm -hmm. So if you just go Generals, you can find Generals company and they have water soluble graphite too as well. The mm -hmm. reason why I'm bringing up this other company is because I've used this and these sticks, they break down in the water great. Mm -hmm. They move around the surface great. Like how, how Swam was having our moments with the graphite stick. That's how mm -hmm. these move. They're real buttery soft. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying that. And in generals, is just right underneath of that to me. Because generals mm -hmm. breaks down pretty good. But, you know, sometimes you don't get the, the uh, 4B, 6B thing or the grades like that. They'll just give you a hard, soft, and medium sometimes. All right. Your 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 cousin Bach N just uh gave you a shout out. Oh, okay. What's up there, fam? How are we doing today? I hope everything's going well. Hey Cam, we gotta get you to draw one day. I'm gonna get you to come on. He's younger, he's not 50 and over. He's part of the, the 30 crowd. You know what I, I mean? Care. And we he, all he's down are. there in Georgia. He's down there in Georgia. All Savannah right. to be exact. So one morning I gotta get him to come on. We might be family. Yeah, you never know. You never know. You know, but shout out to you too. You, you too, cuz. Back in Cameron, a.k.a. Cameron. Thanks for coming through, fam. Always enjoy you looking. 
He likes looking at my artwork when I'm teaching people and stuff, man. He, he puts it on the TV and stuff. And then, my, and then my other little cousins down there get to hear and stuff like that and crack jokes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, that's really What's fun. Up? Say again, Swin. This is really fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what it's really all about, too. It's not about perfection, everybody. Oh, it's all about the experience, the journey. Because think about it. As soon as you have the experience, you're you're... You can't take that away. You'll always know how to at least draw a half a goat. Right. Why? Because you had the experience. Right. <laughs> I like that. You That's can all it is. There you go. It's all about the experience. And then once you have the experience in our world as human beings, you always can pull from it. You always then can go in and negate that, that experience out to be able to use it. And then this is where I say, women rule the day because you guys are based upon negation, digesting and then bringing something else forth. Men, we do that, but we don't do it to the extremes that the feminine energy does. That's why creativity is a feminine energy. You always gotta go within to negate something out. Whether it be subjective or direct as what you're seeing, you're always using negation as a, as a creation process. Negation is a feminine process. If you go and you study the etymology of the word, uh, you just look into the word. I'm just one of those. Well, I'll put it to you this way, you guys. I blame this on Tyler School of Art and Stan Whitney. Thank you very much, Stan, for expressing to me to a young man, thinking that he was the bomb to everything, and then just breaking me down when they look me right in the eye and says, you need to study more. Mm. And study your whole life. Never get complacent with observation and study. Don't confuse it. Always study. Always look. Always explore. Wow. Mm. And then just walk away. Like how Captain Kirk or somebody would walk away. Or like how Spock I love when people do that. They yeah. need to they drop a bomb and then they disappear. Yeah, just walk away. Like this was during the week where you're thinking you're the bomb because you're graduating. And he walked up to me and said, Hey Don, let me speak to you for a moment. With a nice, calm, you know, strong African American male voice, but real low. Stan wasn't really like a loud person. So when he would talk to you, and he, he chose to talk to me that day in the hallway. I guess I was sounding kind of arrogant. And he came up and, and broke my arrogance down with. The, just one word, study. That's it. <laughs> study your whole world. You'll go to your deathbed studying. That was what he said, walking away. Pardon me, I have to go for the day, Don. Thank you very much. Oh, no, thank you for all your time, Suan. We know you, you, you go and you observe your religious practices, and I thank you once again for sharing your time with us. Please enjoy the rest of your day and safe journey to you. God bless to you. Blessings. Bye. Bye. Yeah. You see, everyone? So there's no real excuse if you have a little bit of time and you want to come through on Sundays. We understand that you, a lot of people are religiously inclined. We maybe not, you know, maybe not at certain levels. I see myself as an angelic heathen. So, you know, with that being said, we appreciate yeah, we, we appreciate when someone gives us time in their schedule when they say they're a religious person and they like to go to the house of the Lord or whatever house you're going to. You can be Islamic and you can be going to the, you know, the mosque. If you, you know, if you give us a little bit of time, we're greatly appreciated of, of, of that because you're sharing your time of, I would say, creative experience with your religious or spiritual endeavors. That's all we ask. And once you do that, that gives us the energy, too, to keep going forward and keep creating with you guys. So thanks a lot, Sue Ann. Once again, I know she's gone. Miss Paulette, thank you always. You know the deal. Yeah. And everyone else out there that uh, I would just say part of our, our page and our, and our exclusive group, you know what I mean? What, 180-something strong now? Yeah, I'll give you a number in just a second. 183. Yep. All right. To all 183 of you, thank you. Thank you all for coming to participate, listening to us on the uh, Run Back Wednesdays or, or Look Over Wednesdays. You Throwback. Know, 
Throwback Wednesdays. Thank you, Nate. Throwback Wednesdays. Yeah. Thank you for all of that, you guys. Thank you for looking at the videos when you do. Thank you for going to look at all the videos on YouTube and all our ads and things like this. And, you know, just thank you for participating and sharing your time and choosing us to have your creative and your, your creative journey with us. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's continue doing that. This week was all about the GOAT. Uh, once again, I do apologize for my technical difficulties. Uh, if Nadine wanted to, this was supposed to have been the last class for this one. If Nadine wants to, if we discuss on the back end, maybe we we'll stretch it to half the class next week so we can finish off the video aspect and then move on to our next venture of an, either another goat or another creature. We're not sure just yet. Yeah. We're going to go with the flow on that one. Yeah, all right. Then since you say that, we might, you know, take this to the next one because I'm, I'm feeling bad about that. You know, I shouldn't have let that Reddit terminal be so good to me. But there's just so much food around Nadine. Oh, my God. It's like their black tie event, right? Yeah. Where everything is pretty much free because you're paying for the ticket. Right. So these dumplings, oh, it was the dumplings at the dumplings place. Oh, my God. I got the, the uh, chicken dumplings, man. And the sauce that they had on it, incredible. And the you jerk know. shrimp fry, the, the, the jerk. Uh, the jerk fry, uh, no, the jerk shrimp over rice and the curry shrimp over rice at the uh, Jamaican, uh, uh, oh, I forget the name of the restaurant inside the Red Terminal. Anyway, everybody, go there to the Jamaican uh, restaurant inside the Red Terminal if you're in Philadelphia, and you got to check out the, the curry fried rice. Big up to these guys out there. You got to check out the... Uh, the uh, shrimp jerk and all the other jerk. I only name those off because I don't eat beef and pork, you guys. So I eat the shrimp sometimes. The uh, chicken jerk, oh, is, is incredible from there. The dumplings from the dumpling spot that's in the Reddit terminal, incredible. Oh, they got a cookie, a vegan cookie spot in there. I got their oatmeal uh, raisin cookie. Oh my God. So moist, unbelievable. Uh, no oils in it and things like that. Please excuse me if I'm describing this stuff wrong, guys, but just go to the Redding Terminal in Pennsylvania. It's right in the middle of the heart of the city. You know what I mean? You right. can't miss it. If you come into 30th Street Station, all you got to do is just ask the first ter first person. Other than South Street, where is the Red Terminal to get something good to eat? And everybody's going to point you to get back on the train and get off at 12th Street or 9th right. Street or 10th Street to walk over to the terminal and then just go inside, have a smorgasbord fun. But see, I was at the uh, Black Tie event, so I was able to taste all these foods because that's what they're out there to do, you right. see? So now when you come, just come with about 50 to 100 bucks and you'll have a real decent time if you're a couple or you have two small kids, about 50 to 100 bucks. And you can be out there for like, you know, at least a good four to maybe six hours. And you're going to eat pretty good. You're going to get snack. Like, oh, they had, uh, what did I try? Vegan ice cream that was there. They had another ice cream spot that was there that was pretty decent. Way decent. Yeah, let me stop playing around because I was eating all that stuff. <laughs> let me stop playing. So big up to the Redding Terminal. Uh, I believe I'm part of their their friend list too as well. So some of those people may see the video. Oh, Nadine, I made a lot, a lot of connections with the dot card this weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah, so hopefully we'll have some new members for nice. our page because I was spreading the word about our page too as well. Nice. So I got to get better with that, everybody. I got to make little small banners for myself so when I'm out publicly, people can see and they probably have a QR code for all this stuff so they can get, get to us quicker. And then right. we possibly would have more people. But yeah, Nadine, I must have tapped at least a good, I say about a good 30 people. Nice. Yeah, about a good 30 people. So we're, we're hopefully out of that 30, we got a couple of portrait deals, and hopefully the others are go through and thoroughly investigate what it is that I was conversating on when I was doing the uh the Sicily Tyson piece and everything. Yeah, I saw I, I saw it on the news, but it looked like the photographer didn't make it to where you were. No, they did, but you know the deal. You know I what know. I mean? They did. 
I got I got on the camera, but maybe I didn't look right for their their footage. Um, and the lighting is kind of funny sometimes, so you know. Yeah, I I saw, and I was just like, I was looking to see what was happening there. Well, they probably and, focused in on the, the bands that were playing because they was real good. The entertainment yeah. was real good. And they had the whole food court closed down for that and redid it and had like, you know, like real like furniture and, and sitting areas and cul-de-sacs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, most of some of a lot of the food courts were open. Some of them were open. But a lot yeah, of the, I saw the food. <laughs> yeah, like like I was over at uh, the village, you know what I mean, which is the uh, urban African uh, uh, store and African goods store. Mm -hmm. That's in the middle there where you can buy the, uh, uh, how would you say, clothing, apparel, mm -hmm. and sculptings and things like that. So I was asked to come out there and be out front of that store in that tent and, uh, you know, make them look good, you know, make them look good by doing a nice drawing. So I decided to do Cicely Tyson, and uh, she garnered a lot of attention. So that's why I'm saying, like, the camera guys came over. Uh, I passed information, but there were some of the people that I tapped. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because they was recording, I was like, oh, could you let me know if you use it? So now I know why I didn't get any calls back, because footage probably wasn't used. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I don't know about uh, some of the other stations. I can only tell you what I saw. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't get a hit back from anyone. So, you know what I mean? That Sometimes that happens, you know, what yeah. I mean? because they have better footage of other things. So that's how that whole system works. So I know that, but I was off in front of their the, the village. Uh -huh. So the other cameras was more so set up on the bands and the food that was there. Right. I believe, I forget the interest that's there, the uh, mall foods or something like that was there mm -hmm. in full force. And I think they was the ones that were catering the uh, particular black tie event this year. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the focus was on that main floor and how they had it decored out and, you know what I mean, how things was breaking down. So it looked real good, though. So all the yeah. food you saw, it was real cool to see in person. It was real cool. So if you ever, everybody, if you ever have a chance to come to Philadelphia or you're in the Philadelphia, Delaware Valley area or region, hey, man, check out the Red Terminal. I'm telling you. You don't even have to spend a lot of money, too. Like, all right. Yeah. Let me give you the river line, like for people that's coming from Burlington County, Willingboro, uh, uh, like how I do. You can get on a river line for like $1.60, I believe, one way to get to Camden. So you can get off, you know, well, I get on at the Beverly Edgewater Station. Mm -hmm. Take that, it's $1.60 to get to uh, Randstead Station in Camden. Mm -hmm. You get off there, now you can go and you can take the Patco line, which is like $1.40. Okay, and now you're in Philadelphia. Now you have to pay for the train, or you can get a key card for the day for eight bucks for uh, nine to ten trips, mm -hmm. or you can pay two fifty every time you get on. So for a little less than you know ten bucks, you're in Philly, mm -hmm. right from South Jersey. Now that's anywhere along the corridor, everybody. What they call a Route One Thirty corridor. Is anything from Trenton all the way down to Camden on the Route 130 road or, or, or I would just say expressway? Mm -hmm. Or would that be a byway? Oh, I'm not sure. But look at your Google Maps, everybody, or look at your maps, and you'll see the Route 130 corridor, and you'll see that the uh, river line is on that. Also, you can take it all the way down to the stadium down there in Camden, and then take the the um, the the, uh, the, bo the the boat over. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have that access now, especially when they have concerts down there. So yeah, it's a the nice ferry. day out. Say again? The ferry. Yeah, the ferry, yes. So they take you across the Penn's Landing. You can hang out and get some of that South Philly food or South Street food. And you can come right back and take the ferry back right over to the uh, entertainment complex. I think that's what they call it over there in Camden on the waterfront. And then you get back to your car. And even that trip is like, what, 750 round trip, something like that, on the ferry, I believe. Maybe a little bit less if they have any vents on both sides of the water. So you don't have to drive every time if you don't want to, everybody from 
Burlington County or Southern New Jersey on the corridor side that I'm talking about on Delaware. Yeah. So everyone, get on out and check out that red terminal, man. You're going to have a fat person's lovely day because I'm a fat guy at heart. You're going to have pie, cake, vegan this, gluten-free that, or you can have all that stuff in stuff that's there. However you want it, they have a spot there that will appease your interest or pique your interest. Bookstores, uh, merchandise stores, a plethora of food stores, a plethora of health food stores. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have nice restaurants inside there, nice food vendors and stuff like that. You can even find your, uh, uh, buy your poultry and stuff like that and your uh, uh, produce because you have Quaker interest there. So, you know, you can find out the history of the Redding Terminal. It's like almost like a Quaker meeting house type of idea. Yeah. You see everyone. So if you have that type of Quaker house meeting idea in your area, then you understand how the Redding Terminal is ran, and come on out and have fun. And then there's other areas in the city of Philadelphia, Delaware Valley, that you can have fun and get some good eats. All right? So, yeah. yeah. So, what's your name, Nadine? Life is beautiful. There it is. And your goat is looking very goatish. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. I keep dropping my little pieces of eraser. Ah, but look at how you got more races to just snatch up and keep going. I know. I just grabbed another one. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it, man. That's how you do it. You just snatch up another one and keep going. Keep the flow going. Keep the energy going. Don't let it stop. Get it, get it. Don't let it get you. You get it. Yeah. Oh, I got to make that one a t-shirt, right, too, Nadine, right? What's that? Don't let it get you. Get you it. Get, yeah, you get it. The other one that I got to finish, I'm, see, the whole reason why sometimes it takes a long time to do those, you're trying to pick a typeface that matches the same. Right. Visually, psychologically speaking. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Because like, you don't want it to be so plain of a surf or that it's like it doesn't relay psychologically what you wanted to relay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's why I play with the moving of it and stuff. I mean, hey, why not use that graphic design degree I got, that, that associate's degree? <laughs> yeah, why not? You know, so, yeah, yeah, man. Enjoy it, everybody. Enjoy your creative life like we do here. That goat is amazing right there, baby. Way to go. Yeah, have fun. Miss Paulette, are you still hear us? Because we lost your picture. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, Miss Paula, you having the same issues I'm having today, huh? Well, I had to go out and then come back in, so you know. No, I did the same thing too, Miss Paula. I'm blaming it on the red terminal on my side. What you blaming yours on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so we can't see you, but we can hear you. All right. Hey, Miss Paula. Yeah, same thing with me. Well. Let me show how crappy my, my laptop, computer, phone, I mean, uh, uh, um, camera is. I'm just going to turn on the camera. I had it off. So let's turn it on now. Let me see. There we go. Hey, everybody. Hey. What's yeah. Going on? And, uh, you see, I, I'm not able to control that camera real good, or I'm going to have to upgrade the whole laptop to get a better camera like I have on it once today. I was checking that out in the stores, everybody. It's really some nice laptops out there with some nice cameras on them now. Yeah. Because we're thoroughly into this whole idea of relaying our world digitally and like a videographer now. So you might as well say everybody on a low level is a videographer of some sorts now. <laughs> but you have to be. Yeah, yeah. So did all those black and white photo, photo classes I took in high school come in handy, everybody. So all my art and design people, we can use all those photo classes that we had, you know what I mean? All the cinematography classes that we had. So all my friends that may be watching that were, you know, how would you say a d graduates, 87 a d for life, all day. We can use those photo ideas. And anybody that ever took a black and white photo class and you developed the film in a dark room, please remember, go back to those books and look at how they talk about certain things and see if you can use, not compare and contrast, but see if you can utilize some of those thoughts or suggestions in your digital photography 
or your di digital uh, cinematography. And you may see that, you know, using those thoughts with these new devices may come in handy for you, especially when understanding how to adjust certain areas, like adjusting the contrast and stuff on your screens and things. If you go back and some of us that graduated college, and, you know, from the 80s, 90s and early 2000s, these things are in those books, the earlier ideas of understanding how to adjust for, you know, contrast and all of this stuff. So I'm just bringing that up for people that want to, I would say, play with their, their cameras and their devices a little bit more to bring out things and explore life more. Yeah, Nadine, that's the real Wow. Hey, Nadine, what you doing with a goat in your house? Get that goat out of here. Get that goat out. Yeah. Go you know, now. I'm surprised your little homie ain't barking at him already. Oh, I know. Oh, you know something. Get, get that goat out of here. You done drew it so good, it looks real. You know what I mean? Look at those nostrils. Yeah. And the eye. Oh, I like the way you did the rivets in the, in the horn, Nadine. You caught that idea of it almost being level when it gets to the eye level on the horn. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. See, that's what I'm saying. Your drawing ability, wouldn't you say your drawing ability has become more confident now? You don't really worry yeah. about too much now. Yeah, it is more confident because, you know, I was just out of touch, mm -hmm. really. I remember now when they used to be asking all these other questions, well, this is not right and, and that's not right. And boy, I'm glad that Nadine is in the closet now. <laughs> we'll be back in the closet. Yeah, you put her back in the drawer and say, girl, I'm going to let you out later. I don't need you right now. I just want to have fun and let this stuff come out. Like, like Don suggested, like fraudulence. Have creative fraudulence all over the canvas. <laughs> hey, I told the kids that this weekend, they, did, they all looked at me and finally laughed in unison. I have at least a, one class of seven kids that understand good jokes when it comes down to creativity. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, one, one of them used it as a cartoon idea. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you the title. It's called... <laughs> You're laughing. It must be good. It's, it's funny. It's called Poop-A-Rama. Poop-A-Rama. <laughs> And he just started going through different poop jokes that he heard. And he, we break it. I'm showing him how to make cartoons or uh, editorials or one page cartoons. Oh, man. It's just so much fun to have fun with people when they understand on the level and they're willing to take a risk. He just looked at me and said, You know what, Mr. Don? I like that idea. Uh -huh. Poop Rama. I said, I didn't say that. I said, yeah, I know. But you said, basically, have everything function like how your poop does. I was like, oh, no, not like that. I mean, it's no, Miss Don, I understand. poop rama <laughs> <laughs> The parent came downstairs. He was like, Mom, I got a new idea. It's called poop rama I'm like, oh, my God. And the parent just looked at me, and she started laughing. And she said, thanks, I'll see you next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's just making those connections, everybody. Making those connections with your creative every day and seeing how it may be some similarities in, in your bodily functions and how you should channel your creativity possibly. I don't know. Sometimes I say regurgitate, you know what I mean? Like a fly. Because when flies eat, they eat, and then they regurgitate, and then they eat it again. So mm -hmm. let your creativity be like that. Regurgitate, regurgitate. Keep on eating. <laughs> keep on eating. Yeah, but everybody liked the keep creating part. And then my cousin in New York, she appreciated the keep creating part, her and her fiancé husband. You know what I mean? So that's how the whole keep creating got formulated. So shout out to my family up there in New York, man. And everybody mm -hmm. keep creating up there. You know, so that's everybody in general to our whole crew of 183 people. Uh, yeah. I, Don Stevens, at this point, you know, I'd like to say thank you, everybody, for coming yeah. through oh, boy, at boy, that boy. 12 o'clock point. Yeah. Yeah. How you going to scream at the people now, Nadine? What, what you going to close us out with or give them? 
Hey, the more you look, the more you see. Yeah. Right. The yeah. more you look, the, the more, more you see. see. It's all about observation. Yeah. And the other one, the other takeaway today is time is nothing more than motion. That's it. That's all it is. If you look around you, everybody, when you say it's 12 o'clock, the sun moves from one spot to another. That's just the depiction of motion. You know, if you're saying you got lunchtime at 12 o'clock and you had a job, you're waiting uh, for the right motion to go down to tell you, ah, it's lunchtime, I'm out of here. You know right. What I mean? right. So just think about it in your every day. Is it the time that you really should worry about or should you worry about the motion? I would say that. Would you yeah. worry about the calculation, which is what we call time, or would you just worry about the raw motion? Yeah. Raw motion. Oh, and another takeaway is, in order to exist, you must create. Yes, you have no choice. Honestly, everybody, if you really think about it, I sat down one day, you have these moments by yourself. I was in the woods one day, and I had this, you know, moment. And I'm looking around me, and it just clicked. It's like, I cannot get away from not creating. Yep. I'm, I have to create every day, not because I'm saying, oh, I want to be an artist. It's because, no, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. I have to create every day. With the food that I make, the way I adorn myself, put the clothes on my body, uh, the way I make put things in, the way I ingest things. Mm -hmm. However you want to look at it, everybody, our whole experience, when I had that moment, and then I had the moment again at the beach in front of the water. You're just looking at the water. Sun's coming up. And I'm not trying to make it seem like it's a romantic thing. I'm just saying you're going to have moments when you're by yourself. I had a moment when I was in the shower by myself. And it hit me one time that way. Like, man, I have to be creative. There's not a space in my day that I'm not going to be creative. It just depends upon how I'm going to express that creativity. That's what it is. Oh, am I going to buy a certain piece of furniture? Oh, am I going to paint my walls a certain color? This is all you expressing yourself, having creative moments. If you don't, I swear to you, you'll die. I'm sorry to say it to you, everybody. I'll be the happy person to say it to you, though. I'll say it to you. I've gone to, to uh, rehabilitation centers and things like this, and, you know, Sometimes people get mad at me, but then they look at me at the end of the day and they say, you know what? Thank you for having the guts to even say that to me. You have no choice. If you don't, you're going to die. Last one, everybody. I had an uncle that was, you know, from his poor flesh management skills, love him, Uncle Vernon. He drunk liquor a lot, vodka a lot. He had double and triple strokes that left him bed written. But one thing that he would not stop doing was creating with his mm -hmm. mind, with mm -hmm. his words. Even though you may not understand his words, he was always trying to crack a joke. He's always mm -hmm. trying to still create, you know, and I don't want to mimic because I don't want to make people feel some type of way, you know, to mimic my uncle because he was, he had the speech impairments after all of that, you know, stroke, multiple strokes. So we had the hand that was over, but it didn't matter. He would try to pinch a young lady's butt or he would say to a young lady, you know, beautiful dress and things like this. And yeah, he was still, I'm saying that to say, you have to create to, from dust to dawn or from dawn to dust, I want to say you are perpetually caught as a human being to have to create. Mm -hmm. It is your job. And the minute that you really have the moment to say to yourself, you know what? No, oh, I'm an artist, whether people like to say it or not, because my whole world is based upon creativity. Yeah. Like Nadine, your decoration doesn't look like Miss Paulette's decorations. No. And nor will it look for swans and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So then that's everybody expressing this whole beautiful thing that I just it's just that I had a beautiful night last night. I just want to relay that to everybody. Some of the conversations I had and people that really appreciated the whole idea of, yes, you are an artist, whether somebody says it or not, and your whole world is that. You know? Like, even though everybody was in black tie last night, there was all these different varieties of what black tie could be. Yeah. 
you should have seen the dresses that was out. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. There was some I flamboyant saw. ones. It was, yeah. <laughs> there was people that was half butt naked. You know what I'm saying? There right. was, you know, all types of hairstyles you could want. You know what I mean? All Everybody. nationalities. Everybody yep. was expressing themselves. That's what I'm saying. So everybody's creating and nobody's creativity is the same. It'll never be. It'll never. So you today, everybody, we want you to definitely know, hey, you are artists. Your world is based upon expression. You must yep. express, which means you're in a conundrum of creativity. You yes. must create. You must create. You That's must it. create. And that's yeah. without having to say anything about any religions and metaphysical this or that. No, base root, we're saying high point, the beginning point, you must create, you must express, or you will die. That's it. Yeah, and then still be happy about it. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have to feel like, oh, oh, it's me, or, oh my God. This is one of those philosophical moments where it's a conundrum where you will die. No, we're not. Enjoy the journey, man. <laughs> or die mentally or die spiritually or die physically. You know, yeah. this, it's, it, it, there's more than one meaning to it. Not, you know, you fall over and die. <laughs> Although that could be. Right, right. Because you're not moving because it is about movement. It's Check. about you know, not just sitting and not doing anything. Although you could sit. Yeah. It'll create. Yeah. You know, but we're talking yes. about yeah. being active in something. Yes. Absolutely. So we we hope, Don and I, we hope that um, you get something from this session today and the other sessions that we actually uh, try to bring to you. Um because we appreciate you and we recognize that you are an artist. Mm -hmm. And now it's just a matter of you creating. So well, come join us. Come I join us. real dramatic though, baby. Like if you say that part again, and I can say you can have creative fraudulence. All over you can have side. creative fraudulence. You can let it all out <laughs> on the paper. That's really what it's about. Yes. It is like not caring to fart on the paper <laughs> around other people. You know, when you get on the bus and you do it all quietly because you don't want it, anybody to know that was you. Yes. The bus. Yes. What we're saying is with your art, you want to do that. Stink so up the joint. You don't want to care whether it's perfect or not. Nope. You nope. just want to let out. You want to express yourself. Yep. Let it go. Let just it let go. it out. It's a natural thing. We're trying to tell you it's a natural thing to create. Yep. That's what we're trying to, to express. Yep. That in mind. In my, in my yeah. yeah. There you go, Nadine. Hit him up. Hit him up with the cup. Yeah. And the 24-7, 365. Come and on, the 24-7, 365. And um, I wanted to make sure that we can get this cup over on your site, too, because that's on our, that's on our, um, our what, I, what you call our admin assist folks that come in on Zoom okay. and are much more active. They have the, this logo. But we okay. want to get that logo mm -hmm. in on your shop. Okay. For folks out there that are members, that are not members, you know, maybe they don't come to our sessions. Maybe they just watch, mm -hmm. but they want to contribute by getting a t shirt. This yeah. is what Let's we do. Draw along. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure. I still got the logo here live. Yeah. So you just okay. put it up there as a choice. Okay. All I think right. um, the, uh, that would be great to get that for a mug. They they also have a little tote bag. Yeah, okay. All right. I'll check it out later on. You I'll know, it's an option. It. Yeah, ah, option. cool idea. Thanks, Nadine. Yeah, yeah Nadine, I just wanted Nadine. wanted to do that. We're trying to streamline everything and make it so everybody knows that um you can go to donstevensart.com. Mm -hmm. You can find out where to get the t-shirts and other merch. You can find out where Don is around 
around the city or the the the, the internet the state like area on the internet at that website you can also reach out to him if you want to take your art journey further we're here to get you excited we're here to create a community community of folks um creating together and also maybe in the near future have a workshop focusing mm -hmm. on particular things where everyone is, it's more structured. Mm -hmm. We're here and this is carefree. If you tuned into it thinking you were getting just a free class, you are gonna learn some here, but this isn't really class structure. Mm -hmm. This is like us getting together. Don gives us suggestions. We work on a project. We sit and we talk mm -hmm. and just trying to get people to understand that. You want a class, you want to focus, you want to grow your talent, then donstevensart.com. Go to the yep. Yes, go to the coaching and, and, and then move forward from there. That We're here to inspire more people to get to creating art. That's what we're here for. Okay? Mm -hmm. oh, That's wow. what this platform is for. Get I'm you got me all energized. Baby. I got to get it together, and, man. Like, oh. Right. And tell you, <laughs> yes. And tell your kids. Tell the young adults that maybe doodle, but you worried about them getting into other stuff. That's what we're here. We're here to spread this, this passion for being human and creating art. That's why we are here. Okay. So anyway, Don, we're gonna we're gonna take it away, but um, all right, have to get that out. Yo, no, let it out. Building up in my stomach. I had to let it out. <laughs> there it is. You know, I, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm feeling yes, really it, baby. Y'all, we love you. We thank you for your support. We thank you for those that leave comments in the comment section. We most definitely thank Miss Paulette, who's in yeah. black. She's in black, but she's in solidarity with us. And we yeah. just want to uh, let you know that uh, we're going to have the throwback. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That's to remind anybody that maybe missed the class, but to be able to watch it. Um, sometimes I'm working, so I can't really respond because I'm working, mm -hmm. but we try to respond as quickly as we can to any comments on there. If you have any questions about anything, you can uh, Facebook Messenger. Uh, Don and I, we are available and open um, for questions, mm -hmm. but a lot of times we will re we will direct you to particular videos because we want you to get the full experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can tell you, oh, X, Y, Z, okay, go to the store and get this, you know, or blah, 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 mm -hmm. but we, we're dropping this, 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 these opportunities to experience the creative process. And, and, and that's why these videos are here and are available for free right now, folks. So, okay. And then, so we hope, we hope to get a workshop together, hoping, uh, Don, I hope maybe in the spring we can get a workshop together. Sure. For folks we'll to work, to work on. on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll be talking more about that. So thank you everybody. And as always, you know the deal. Wait. Keep creating! Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, Don. No problem. Thanks, Thanks, Miss Thanks, Miss